Even though she did bad, I think it's great that she wants to make up for it. You did it. it. With the Thorian gone, we can start rebuilding for ourselves again. And we're free of Exogeny's threats. We're back to being just a little nowhere colony. Thank <laughs> you, Commander. Let's talk to these guys. I hope Exogeny learned it. I guess she was just, like very unimportant that she survived. Like, I know some of the refugees were spared, but I need to find out which ones were spared or not. Any luck finding my workstation out in the ruins? I haven't found your workstation or data yet. Just keep it in mind while you're out there. I will do what I can to assist the colony in this difficult time. I am ashamed of the damage done to the lives of these people. Farewell, Shiala. Farewell, Commander. I wish you well in your hunt. Exogeny better fund us like they have raped us in the first place. It'll be tough going, but we'll make this a home. I will come back and do our mission sometime, but at the moment. I feel like just going somewhere else at the moment because the fact the fact is that it's not as simple as just go there and get it. It's pretty far, you know. We've got other missions to get done. Who's that? She's gone. Finally, that damn thing is out of my head. I can think without pain, and with the power cells you brought, I can get this place up and running again. Thanks, Commander. No problem. Just push it to save everyone. We have more grenades. Oh well, let's get back to the ship before anything else happens. And there's Stewie to tell the crew. Boy, I bet the council is not going to believe any of this. On the bright side, at least you got us some new armor now. Open the doors. I can, I can use a shower after all that fighting. Stand by, shore party. Decontamination in progress. Hey, that'd be interesting, guys. We should they get that? You actually have the ability to go to shower on this game. That'd be interesting. <laughs> Decontamination in progress. Have to scrub those guns. Scrub everything. Decontamination in progress. What Commander, the... you look pale. Are you suffering any ill effects from the cipher? I was just brain probed. <laughs> I feel strange. The cipher shook me up a bit. I might be able to help you. I am an expert on the Protheans. If I join my consciousness to yours, maybe we can make some sense of it. Go ahead. Do it. Hurry. We don't have much time. Use all the help we can get at the moment. Relax, Commander. Embrace eternity. My gosh, it feels weird you see. It's like we're actually like going crazy in your head. That was incredible. All this time, all my research, yet I. I never dreamed. I am sorry. The images were so vivid. I never imagined the experience would be so intense. You are remarkably strong-willed, Commander. What you have been through, what you have seen, would have destroyed a lesser mind. Did you see anything? The beacon on Eden Prime must have been badly damaged. Large parts of the vision are... are missing. The data transferred into the commander's mind is incomplete. Did you learn anything? You must have seen something. I was able to interpret the data relayed through your vision. What was there at least. But something was missing. Saren must have the missing information. Maybe he found another beacon. If we can find the missing data from your vision, I can... I can... Oh, oh boy, it's worn her out. I'm sorry. 
The joining is exhausting. I should go to the medical bay and lie down for a moment. Are you okay? Dr. Chalkwash should take a look at you. That will not be necessary. I just need some rest. Somewhere quiet. We're done here. Dismissed. I've sent off the Pharos report, Commander. You want me to patch you through to the Council? Okay, let's talk Patch him through, Joker. Setting up the link now, Commander. Commander, Exogenia should have told us about the Thorian. It would have made your job much easier. You might have been able to capture it for study instead of destroying it. That wouldn't work. It bit off this way. Uh... Exogeny tried to study it. Look how that turned out. Perhaps it's for the best then. Why is it one eye like close closing? Of course it was saved. For the other. Shepard would go to any lengths to help a human colony. Being human had nothing to do with it. They were in trouble. Admirable. But sometimes specters have to make sacrifices. I hope you're willing to do that when the time comes. Goodbye, Commander. We will be waiting for I'm your pretty next sure report. you weren't like it used the one being sacrificed, dude. No, I hate that about people. I mean, he says that, but I'm pretty sure if he was part of sacrifice, he wouldn't be so willing for that to happen, you know? Of course, he doesn't think about it, does he? Let's go talk to the crew, see what they think of all this situation. Surely they have some kind of opinion on all of this. You okay? You better not flirt at me, I'm gonna turn him down otherwise. Do you have some time to talk now, Commander? I'm Let's listening. Hear it, Lieutenant. I'm always open to my officers. We've played it pretty close to the book so far, but we're a long way from backup. We've got some tough calls to make. I'm just saying, try to leave yourself a way out. I've seen what cutting corners can do, and I'd hate to have that happen to you, Shepard. Commander. Are you concerned for me? This a personal observation, Caden? I, uh, I, I don't want to step on anyone else's toes, especially if you're a, uh, if I have misread your interests. That's 100%. You mean Liara? Someone? You're referring to our young Prothean expert. <laughs> I think she's older than both of us put together, but uh, yeah. There's a lower deck rumor that she's uh, interested in you. It's more than a source of Prothean data. She's a very interesting lady. To my uh, tastes, but... I never claimed to be big on alien culture. Mm, I think I've heard enough. Are you jealous? You seem awfully worried about my personal affairs. It's just that we don't have much downtime these days. I like being around you, but I, I don't want to take up your personal time. I'm here, aren't I? Uh... I'm tired of this, Lieutenant. I don't care if you have a problem with me chatting up Liara. It's none of your business. You... I wasn't yes, sure what to do, because I don't want because my character and him to get together, so... I was trying to think which one of those can I pick to keep me away from getting close to him. Because with this game, it can be kind of automatic depending on what you say, so... You gotta be careful if, you don't, if you're don't if you talking to someone you don't want to date on there. Let's go see how Yara is. Commander, are you coming to check up on me? Are you okay? You look much better. How are you feeling? Dr. Chakwas assures me I am going to be fine. I was impressed with her knowledge of Asari physiology. You're in good hands. Dr. Chakwas knows what she's doing. I get the feeling you want to ask me something, Commander. we could pick up where we left off. You were telling me about your interest in the Protheans. Actually, I think I was talking about my interest in you, 
and making a fool of myself in the process. Well, it was like a fool of yourself. I'm not used to dealing with people, especially humans. I did not really know much about your species when we first met, Shepard. I found it hard to take humanity seriously. Your kind always seemed so rushed and high strung. We're short lived. We don't have the luxury of time. An Asari can live for a thousand years. We're lucky if we hit 150. That is true. At first, I thought that was a weakness of your species. After spending time with you and your crew, however, I think it may actually be an advantage. Why? You humans are creatures of action. You pursue your goals with an almost indomitable determination. It is an admirable trait, but also an intimidating one. You're scared of us? Unfortunately, the rest of the galaxy sees humanity as something of a bully. You run over anyone in your path to get what you want. It is up to people like you to change their minds, Shepard. Me? Why me? There is a reason the Council chose you to become a Spectre. They saw something special in you. The best of what humanity has to offer. I looked into your history. I know what you did during the Blitz. It was a remarkable display of courage and heroism. You could have asked. You didn't need to go behind my back. I would have told you whatever you wanted to know. I apologize, Commander. After our last conversation, I was afraid I would say something stupid again. Oh, don't worry. I need to know more about you. To understand what made you into the woman you are. There is something compelling about you, Shepard. Are you sure you're interested in me? Or is it my visions of the Protheans? I admit, your I think it's kind of both, the really. had something to do with my initial interest. But it has grown beyond that. You intrigue me, Shepard. But I was not sure if it was appropriate to act on my feelings. Oh, it's fine. <laughs> I thought there might already be a relationship between you and Lieutenant Delenko. The Lieutenant and I are just friends. Nothing more. My mistake, then. I am not as adept at understanding human relationships as I thought. But what about us, Shepard? Is there a mutual attraction, or was I wrong about that too? No, you were right. There is something between us. I think I'm, I just want to make this kind of interesting, I and guess. I, knew you felt it I too. guess to like. But does this not she's, seem she's not bad. strange? I gotta say. Why do I feel so close to you? Because you let me. <laughs> We are from two different species. We have almost nothing in what common. What kind of kids would they are? This they can't even have kids, I guess. Although I guess the salary doesn't matter what gender you are. Saren wants both of us dead. That's something. That is not the most romantic reason, is it? You make it all sound so dangerous. I'll protect you. I'll keep you safe. I am not looking for a protector. This is all a bit overwhelming. I am not used to this. You. I need some time. Take all the time you need, Liara. I'll be here. Thank you, Shepard. Let's... Let's just talk about something else for now. I should go. Goodbye, Shepard. Well, that was a very interesting thing. Yes, Commander? Is there something you need? I should go. Goodbye, Commander. I will follow check in case there's anything new she wanted to talk about. But yeah, that's very interesting now. Now you got a relationship going on, I guess. I was originally going to try to get her to go out with Anders. I think that's her name. Is it Anders? God, am I getting it wrong already? God, I, I I have been playing other games recently, so I'm forgetting a little bit about this game. But anyway, I know that with the human, I remember from past times that she doesn't date girls, so it would not have worked if you tried to go out with her. It only you can only date. I only are okay if you're a girl, but look, but as far as I can remember, anyway. Oh, it's Ashley. What do you want, Shepard? Why did you become a mercenary? Lots of reasons. Elaborate. Such as? Such as, I needed to get out of our system. I needed to eat. 
I needed to survive. Why not stay and help your people? I tried to help. That's why I had to leave. What happened? I was betrayed. Really? I was head of a small tribe. We were trying to restore order after the war. But the other tribes were against us. They followed Jared, one of the few warlords who survived the war with the Turians. But he was old, and so were his ideas. He wanted to continue the war. He wanted us to fight. Turians, Salarians, each other. It didn't matter who, as long as we were fighting. Uh, what about you? What did you want? I just wanted Jared to shut up. <laughs> to stop his ranting. I wanted him to stop leading the tribes astray. But he couldn't understand how much things had changed. We didn't have the numbers to go to war. Even if we did, the Genophage made sure we couldn't replenish our numbers fast enough. I told them all to forget about war. We needed to focus on breeding, at least for one generation. And for a while, we were getting through. Some of the tribes started coming around. I take it the warlord didn't appreciate that. No, he didn't. He arranged a crush with the tribes. A meeting on neutral ground. He wanted to talk. We met at the Hollows, near the graves of our ancestors. The skulls of our dead laid bare to remind us where we come from where we all go. It's as sacred as any Krogan place can be. Violence is forbidden. Sounds like a trap to me. You must have suspected as much. I did. But when your father invites you to a crush, well, there are some laws that even we hold sacred. Jared was your father? He was. Until that day. We talked, but we didn't get anywhere. When it was clear that I wouldn't join him, he gave the signal. His men leapt from the graves of our ancestors like Krogan undead. The few that were loyal to me died quickly. Oh. I escaped with my life, but not life is full of traces, I guess. I daggered deep into my father's chest. That is why I left. And that's why I'll never go back. You must have family other than your father. Don't you miss them? You're trying to make me cry, Shepard. Maybe. I've got some unfinished business with my family. But that's all. What kind of business? <sighs> Before I left, I made an oath to my father's father. I swore to recover my family's battle armor. It was taken from him after the uprising. Who has it? Originally, it was taken by the Turian military. We weren't allowed armor or weapons after the war. Now, it's in the hands of Ton Atus, a Turian scum who collects relics from the war. He's made millions selling Krogan artifacts that were stolen from my people. He's got several bases where he stores his goods. All fortified and guarded. I just don't know which base has my family's armor. I'll go look for it. I'll upload the data to your nav system. But Commander, I want to be there when you find him. Good. So long, Rex. Shepard. Commander? Do you have a few minutes to talk? One on one? Sure. I was just watching some mail from home. Oh, before I go, we saw Caden in a news vid about the Normandy. He's cute. Later, sis. Oh, jeez. <laughs> Let's pretend this never happened. That's unprofessional. Too late. The damage is done, Williams. Oh, shoot me. <laughs> One of my sisters. That's Sarah, the youngest. I guess that. Uh, What's up? You didn't come by to eavesdrop on family mail. 
Your family seems to be important to you. Yeah, we've always been close. Me and my sisters especially. With Dad on duty so much, I had to help Mom raise them. After helping raise them, your sisters still talk to you? <laughs> Amazing. Things were tense between Sarah and me for it's, a while. I, then we bonded. I understand why Sarah would have to do that, but I feel bad for when his sister has to look after her sister. Sounds like your father wasn't around much. Wasn't your family stationed near him? Dad always wanted to serve in space, but he wanted us to have real ground under our feet. He'd say, space is beautiful, but you can't raise a family there. Well... I cannot rest from travel. I wouldn't mind that. Drink life if we had like a space... Honestly, times I've enjoyed in the future they invent spaceships. I wouldn't mind us having a family on board a spaceship, I will be honest. You know... As long as it has like all the pilot where it flies through space, just like kind of like in Star Wars, I guess you could say. It would be an interesting. Your children get to see new planets and all kinds of things. I think it'd be beautiful. I think honestly, it'd be a great life. I never thought I'd hear you reciting poetry. Just because I can drill you between the eyes at a hundred meters doesn't mean I can't like sensitive stuff. <laughs> just don't spread it around. Ulysses was my dad's favorite poem. Every time he shipped out, he recorded me reading it. He had a dozen versions when he retired. Does he still like it? I sure hope so. I read it to his grave every time I go home. Oh. Dad passed on a few years back. He's probably still watching, though. You mean from wherever we go after death? Dead on Skipper. He's with God now. That's not a problem with you, is it? That I believe in God? It's not my place to judge. Your beliefs are your business. I'm your commanding officer, not your moral compass. I appreciate that, Skipper. I should get back to my duties. Even though I don't believe in God, I, I don't judge people who do, because, you know, I, I could be wrong. But I, I honestly have my reasons why I don't believe in it, but, you know, pe People who believe in it could be right, I could be wrong, or it could be the other way around. But honestly, you don't really know until you die, basically. So I'm not going to stand right, but I'm not going to stand wrong either. You gotta admire those colonials. That's about the worst place for a colony I've ever seen. Given the option, I'd get the hell out of Dodge. Dismissed, Chief. Ma'am. <laughs> 